conversations on questions about intake manifold gaskets, type of bolts, length of bolts, gasket combinations, and what kind of manifolds go where. So what we did is we set up a display of the different manifolds we've tried over the years, the different ones we've made, what we've had for prototypes, and what we use for production stuff. Where we started was the original GM manifold. In stock configuration, it runs out of air at about 4,500, 4,800 RPM. Can't make much over 500 horsepower on a good day. Then, when we developed the heads to go with it, the heads have adequate airflow to be able to move enough air to make 600 horsepower out of a 500 cubic inch motor. These heads that we make here are the ones that have been doing so good for all these years, but it requires a better manifold. It doesn't do any good to have a good head if you don't have a good manifold. So we came up with a prototype, like this guy here years ago, did some playing with it. It had short runners, worked good at high RPMs, lost some of the mid-range torque. Then we ended up building this manifold. We made this manifold for probably 12, 14 years. This manifold made really, really good bottom end torque, mid-range torque, and still made 600 horsepower when we had the 90 millimeter throttle block on it. With the 80 millimeter, it was a little bit tough to get to 600 because it wouldn't flow enough airflow, but the 90 millimeter pretty much took care of that. Then over the years, for the truck guys, we started modifying these manifolds here. The runner design of the manifold is good, plenum volume is good. The problem was the bottom side of the manifold down underneath was modified for emissions. It has the EGR port going into the bottom, and it goes from either a 75 millimeter or 80 millimeter hole here to about 55 millimeters down underneath the down underneath the manifold. Where you have that, no matter what you put in front of it, you can't get the airflow into the, the plenum to be able to supply the air to the runners. So what we found out over the years is if we take this guy, cut the bottom out of it, modify some stuff inside and weld it back together, we can get this manifold about 80% as good as this guy right here. So you can get pretty close to 600 horsepower with right cams, right, in, right, right cylinder heads and good exhaust system, and still be able to pass California spot, which we have to do, and still have the stock configuration so nobody really knows what you're doing. These have been selling an awful lot of the truck. It works really, really, really good. It's either available with the 80 millimeter or the 90 millimeter like this one here. For the 90 millimeter, we have to do some extra work down inside here, port it out, and make it fit a little bit better. So this guy here, there's a couple of guys down in Australia that use this for class racing on an 8.1 where they have to run electronically injected factory motors. So they use a combination like this. We've got a couple out in boats that are in the, uh, not so much racing, more sports class, they just play with them here. This manifold here, we had made in a 3D printer. It was a prototype manifold we're looking at. It's got turret runners, really big volume, runs 90 millimeter throttle body, and looks really cool. This manifold here worked really good, it's got good volume. We actually stamped these runners out. That was an interesting adventure. It worked good, but it was very, very time consuming and problematic. For the manifold, this manifold here, they have cast runners. So this manifold has CNC parts here, cast runners here, sheet metal box, and then it takes a really good fabricator to be able to put this all together. And our welder is just superb. He's really, really good. But this manifold requires a lot of time to source out all the parts and make sure everything's put together and then have it fabricated and put back where it needs to be. So this one flows, I don't know where it stops, probably around 2000 CFM. This in here flows probably 13, 1400 with this. The short runners, they're good for higher RPM. They work really, really good in the bigger cubic inches from probably 3500 to 62, 6500. Both those two there. Where these manifolds here both have really good mid range torque and top end bolt because they've got a 16 inch runner. This one has a 12 inch runner. That one over there has a 12 inch runner. This one here has an 18 inch runner. So this one is oriented more towards low RPM torque, and you can just go through and choose the manifold on the kind of type you want to be able to get it to do whatever you need it to do. But this is pretty much what we have for manifolds, you know, that we've used over the years. So that's just for information. Okay, now we're going to show you gaskets. This gasket here was in early production 2001 to 2002, 3, 4. So a lot of the trucks that had problems with oil leaking had a problem with this seal right here. The oil would be drawn from the valley cover in here into the intake manifolds and then go away and be burnt. So these didn't last too long. Okay, the next gasket they had 
was this General Motors gasket here. This one doesn't have the little funnel right here. That's because the heads didn't have the little holes for the recess to drop into. So this is the first production gasket from a 2001 to 2004 replacement. And this is the one I like to use for everything. It's, it's more forgiving. Next gasket we have here is a 2004 to 2007. And it has this little funnel type indention here. And it's designed to line up on some holes that are machined into the front of the cylinder head where the bolts go through. The problem with these guys is, if you have any kind of alignment problems, which is really close, it smashes this right here and won't let the manifold come down and tighten up on these gaskets here. So if you have these, the first thing I suggest you do is grind them off or get the early model gaskets. Other than that, they're exactly the same. Same kind of rubber, same kind of material. These are the replacements for this style gasket here. Another gasket that we find really useful is this gasket here. This is one we sell. It's made out of compressible material. It has really good compression, so it takes care of any irregularities you have in the manifold or the heads. This manifold gasket works really good too, and it's also easy to put on. It's got the elongated holes here, so when the bolt goes through at an angle, it's got lots of room. On the Chevrolet holes, if you don't have that thing in the right place, you're really bound up tight. And that's one of the problems you see is you can't get the bolts through the hole because these gaskets here don't allow you any freedom. I mean, that's, that's, that's right there. It's either right or it doesn't work. So that makes these a little bit more of a trouble thing you have to put on. So it works really good test fitting the manifold. The bolts available. The silver ones here. These are 2001, 2, 3, 4 General Motors 60 millimeter. These are the factory bolts that are silver. These are what everybody is told by General Motors to throw away. Don't use these. These are the 70 millimeter black GM ones. This is the replacement bolt that replaces those. Now we've had other people with different manifolds, different pieces, different parts, say they don't get enough engagement because this taper right here hasn't got any threads. And you lose the first couple threads. So this bolt here is an ARP bolt. It's an 80 millimeter, six millimeter bolt, and it does the same thing. And besides that, it looks pretty. So, but if you have a problem with taking the top two or three threads out of your head, then these are the bolts you want to get right here. Retap the head, make sure the threads are nice and clean, and then go for the 80 millimeter bolt. The biggest problem with these guys is since they're longer, you got to make sure that you actually have some compression here. I've seen it where it's bottomed down in this hole here first and doesn't pull enough compression right here to be able to pull the manifold down tight. So you gotta make sure these guys don't bottom out. But this is the answer for a bolt like this that doesn't have a couple of threads and if you have a problem with engagement inside your head and manifold. This piece here, this is the factory rubber seal across the back of the manifold. Throw it in the trash, don't even bother spending your time on it because the problem is after you machine the heads or you deck the block or you change the thickness of the head gaskets, it changes the location of the head. It also changes the location of the intake manifold since it's vertical. Well, if it doesn't go down far enough, as it moves the heads closer together, because you're decking the block, you're cutting the deck on the heads, it moves the heads together, that sets the manifold up higher, it won't compress this rubber right, and you'll have an oil leak. The best thing to do is to use like Permatex, gray silicone, uh, General Motors has got some gray silicone. Use it across the back of the intake manifold on the china rail. Put a bead back there, and then as you put the manifold on and pull it down tight, look and see how much squeezes out because you want to make sure you have some rolls out both sides to make sure you had enough on there in the first place. Because if you don't get enough, this thing's going to leak and you don't want leaks on your motor. In this little episode here, we're going to show what it takes to put an intake manifold on a 496. We have a lot of people asking questions on how to do it, what kind of gaskets to use, what the deal is with different bolts. The bolts we're going to be using are the black General Motors replacement bolts. They're 70 millimeter long. If you go to General Motors and ask them, these are the replacement bolts. It replaces the 2001 to 2000 bolts. So the gaskets we're using, just for demonstration purposes, are these paper gaskets. They work really good for demonstration. They actually work pretty good as far as assembly, but a little bit harder to find than the GM O-ring gaskets. The GM O-ring gaskets work really good. These little guys here, these pliers, are used to make sure all these corners here are basically down flat with the china rail so it doesn't hold the gaskets up and the manifold up. These guys have a cute little bend in them work really good. But we use them here, 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 and here. They still allow you to drop the gaskets into the little locks right here to make sure they're in the right location. 
Okay, after we've got the gaskets on, next thing we do, my favorite is Permatex Gray. It's a really good sealant. It works really good for the front of this. We don't use the rubber gaskets because depending on whether the block has been decked or the head has been milled or whatever thickness gasket you have, it moves the head further up and down. As you move this in tighter, it raises the manifold. So you end up with a variable in here. So it just works really good to be able to use this gray silicone sealant. Okay, you want to bring a little bit up on this side here and this side here because when you take the gasket, you want the gasket to sit down into it like that and like that. Now you've got enough across here that you're not going to have a problem. Okay, we're not going to put any on the back because we're just going to take this manifold back off again anyway. So we're going to grab the manifold. This is one of our modified manifolds that we use on the trucks. It works really good. Now the important area here is to look right there and see what squishes out. Now we're going to use the 70 millimeter bolts in the aluminum heads. I put anesthes on everything. So we're going to anesthetize these bolts. We're going to drop them in the holes. The way to index these grab this guy and you rock it back and forth. And that just takes and lines up all the bolts. My favorite tool for doing this is a quarter inch drive, 10 millimeter wobble socket, a little quarter inch ratchet. You run all the bolts in a little bit, get them started, you don't tighten any of them. Now this is a lot easier to do than with the fuel rail on it, because when you have the fuel rail on it, you've got injectors here, you've got wiring, you've got all the fuel rail crossovers, you've got all those other things that kind of get in the way. That's why this wobble socket here is so useful, is after you get the, the other components on the manifold, you can come in from all these different angles and still be able to turn these bolts. Okay, once you get it on, I usually rock it back and forth like this because it all has a little bit of play and you just kind of want to make sure it's centered. And then I start in the middle and bring them down. You don't need anything more than a quarter inch ratchet in your hand because these are little tiny bolts are the same size as quarter inch and anything more than 10 foot pounds, you'll start pulling the threads right out of the heads or break the threads off the bolts. After you started pulling this thing down, you go over it two or three times because you'll find out as you clamp it down a little bit more, say you do the end bolts, the middle ones are going to loosen up. And after you do the middle ones, the end ones are going to loosen up. So you really need to go over this thing just two or three times and you just use your wrist. If you've got a torque wrench, I think the numbers are like 12 foot pounds, about 120 inch pounds. You can actually feel when these bolts get tight, they snug up really nice. When you're done, you look across here on the front and the back and make sure you have sealant compressed all the way out of here. Because if you don't have this, if you've got areas that don't have sealant coming out, you'll have an oil leak. I'd wait until it dries the next day. I know you've got a really big incentive just to wipe it off. But when you do, it smears it. The best thing to do is let it sit for a day till it's dry and then take a razor blade and you can just trim that up really nice. And there you go, that's all there is to this little adventure.